It's Emily with V Wonderland. I'm going to be trying five different foundations for you today, and for each foundation, I will be looking at the application process. How easy is it to put these sunscreens and these foundations onto my face? The finish, is it a good glossy look or is it a good matte look? As long as it does what it says it'll do. And finally, is the coverage good? I will be reviewing these foundations based on the intensity of it. So we're gonna start with the lowest supposed coverage. And this one is a La Roche Posay SPF 50 mineral tinted BB cream. As you can see, very liquidy texture. It's very close to my skin color. I think this only comes in like one or two colors. So this is like a one color fits all. It's supposed to be very light coverage. And it's mostly just for a very natural look. Um, and just to kind of make it easier for people who want a little bit more color correction to have SPF on their face. Um, this is a very oily kind of foundation. So I think in terms of application, it's very easy to put on. It glides onto the skin and it doesn't feel too heavy, but I would worry about this product in terms of whether or not it's a good fit for people with oily skin like myself. So I didn't put any primer on prior to putting this on my face because this is supposed to be just a grab and go sunscreen foundation. You just slap it on, it's supposed to look great. Um, my skin isn't the best, so even though it did give me a little bit of a coverage, it's a little more oily than I'd like. If you have dry skin and you want that Korean glass skin, this is the perfect on the go, super easy one step foundation. But otherwise, I would say coverage scale of one to five, it's a one. Application, it is a four, super easy to use. And in terms of the finish, does it give a nice tinted finish? Um, I would say a two to three. I just took off foundation number one and I went ahead and used this Tatcha, the Silk Canvas Primer. It's a liquid pr the primer. It's a, <laughs> it's a liquid primer that's really good for your skin. Oh my gosh, really good for your skin. This is a great primer to use. I'm so sorry, Tatcha, I did y'all dirty. But <laughs> um, from now on, for all the other foundations that I will try in the future, that is the primer to use. I'm going to go ahead and start off next with a cushion. I'm using this IOB Perfect Cushion Foundation in the number 23, Natural Beige. I finally am starting to say English, that's great. And I like this one because it's got a mirror. You usually put your cushion here. I like to use the Misha cushion. So I just go like, boop, and I put that there. And so in terms of applicability or how well does it apply, I think it's super user friendly, so that's a plus. And then you just put this on here onto your skin. So this cushion actually has more coverage than the other cushions out there. Like for example, Misha and Laneige have a more natural looking one. So this one is a little bit more matte, a little bit more American, it has more coverage. And it's also buildable, which is great. So I think that's also a plus. You just kind of go in here, dab, dab, dab. And then you kind of do this thing called a stippling method where you just kind of tap it in like this. As you can see, the more that I've tapped onto my skin, the more it built onto my skin. So this is once again, a very buildable looking foundation. As you can see, I've gone ahead and I've only done half my face so you can really see the difference that this foundation makes. As you can see, I am definitely lighter on this side. Uh, I don't know why, but it's always like the Korean, like ajimas that are at the shop. They're always like choosing a couple shades of lighter, but whatever, it does work for me, especially when I do cosplay and I do want my skin to look lighter. Um, you can still see like the very huge acne scars that I have, but in comparison to this, like the redness, the spotchiness is gone. So this is kind of like a concealer all in one sort of foundation. Like I said, the application was great. Um, so it may take some time, but it's buildable. So there's that versatility kind of plus to it. I would say that this is a four out of five in terms of applicability. So in terms of coverage as well as the finish, is this a good finish? I would say yes. It's clean, it's kind of matte, but also has the natural sheen that everyone wants, as well as coverage, it's buildable, so you can go from coverage one to five. Um, I wouldn't quite say five, because it's not SFX, there we go. It's not SFX coverage, but I would say it doesn't do a pretty good job of covering most things, so I'd say it's like a four max in terms of doing coverage, because I know you can do more if you want to. Um, but I would say overall, this is a pretty solid beginner's foundation. This next foundation that we are starting with is actually one of my personal favorites, so I might be a little bit biased when I'm reviewing this one, but this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation. It's the medium coverage. They have a medium and a high coverage. I personally like to use medium because my skin isn't like super awful, so I think it's great. Obviously, this is also a buildable one. It's got a smooth finish, and this is in the color, I think, 3.5. And so I like this one because it comes with a pump already. I usually use two, but I'm just gonna go ahead with one just to show you what it looks like with just one pump. Yeah, and you know, I'm low-key throwing shade at certain brands because there are some brands where you have to pay for the pump. And 
I'm going to be reviewing the MAC foundation. I actually really like that one as well. Um, this one gets a pretty good score in terms of like application. Like, is it easy for the user to use? I would say, yes, it's a simple pump. You just need either a cushion or a brush. Um, so I would say like four, and it's like super smooth on my skin. So very creamy texture, smooth. And it's not heavy, it's very light, so I enjoy that. As you can see, this one definitely fits my skin color more so than the other one before. But yeah, it's much smoother. It doesn't suffocate your skin, so it does give like a nice finish. Um, it's not a perfect finish, but it does do a very luminous job versus right here, as you can see. It's very buildable, but I don't like to ruin my skin that way, so I just do enough where it's like, okay, I think everything in general, color-wise, is pretty good to go. As you can see, this side is right here without any foundation. This is with the primer and the foundation, the Giorgio Armani one. In terms of application, I already said it was a four. It was pretty good because it's easy to use pump and then it's very smooth on your skin. I would say in terms of the finish, it is kind of a matte, half matte slash half sheer. It seems like that's kind of the trend. I love how this looks, especially on oily skin. It's really hard to have such a smooth finish that lasts long. So I would say this is the best in terms of like finish on your skin. It just looks beautiful in terms of just what looks good on your skin. In terms of the overall coverage, since this is a medium coverage, obviously it's not gonna be like super high in terms of covering everything. Um, but I would say it, it is four, like 3.5, 4-ish. Obviously if you wanted to do another coat, then it would be more towards five. As you can see, I actually still have the Giorgio Armani foundation right here on this side. And I thought it'd be kind of interesting to actually put the MAC Studio Fix Fluid foundation that I put. This one is high coverage to put on this side to kind of see what the difference between the medium and the high coverage from two different brands would look like. This one also has kind of an orangey tint on it as well. So I want to see how this looks in comparison to kind of more of the cool tone because mine is like an NC 3.5 from Giorgio Armani. This is what I was complaining about when it comes to the application of MAC. I would give this a three or a two, honestly, just in terms of like, I, I just didn't buy the pump $15 for a pump. I really didn't want to do that, but at the time, I didn't know how hard it was going to be to kind of get it on and put like too much. I think honestly I should just get a pump, which I will later. But anywho, this is kind of like what it looks like. As you can see, it's a little bit more orange per se. I will say I really enjoy the texture of this after it's fully blended out. Um, so yeah, I do look kind of like a Cheeto or like this doesn't fit me, but after blending a lot, it will. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I somehow managed to blend everything. Um, it definitely got on my lips a bit. But anywho, between these two, as you can see, this one is more of a natural finish. And then this one is very like, boom, beauty filter Instagram version of kind of what everything looks like. As you can see, you can barely even see my acne scars or anything like that. Here you can still see kind of a faded um, aspect of it right here. But yeah, definitely this is a five in terms of the coverage. In terms of the finish, I think it's okay. It does look kind of cakey. Um, it is supposed to be a matte finish. That's what the bottle says versus this one, which is kind of more of a luminous silk one. I do prefer this finish more so than this one. I'd say the finish for this one would be like three. I'm not a huge fan. I keep getting this color whenever people match me at Sephora or Ulta or whatever. Um, this would be the NC20 and this is the NC3.5. Even though this is an NC color from MAC, it still doesn't look that cool. It looks kind of warm. Um, so I would just say in terms of the color and the finish, I like this one better as well as the application. But I will say if you really, really want some high, you know, high intensity coverage, MAC is the way to go. I went ahead and removed the MAC side. The Giorgio Armani side still stands here since this is my favorite foundation so far. And we're gonna go in with our last one, which is actually a powder one, which I actually haven't tried yet. So, fun times. And yes, I went ahead with the Tatcha Primer here. We wanna give all the foundations here a fair shot. And this one I actually was inspired because of TikTok and Instagram. I saw this everywhere. You know how there's like always that one product where people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't think this was gonna work. And they put on a swatch and they're like, oh, it works. And so this is one of those products. This is the One Size by Patrick Star, I believe. Here you go, beautiful. It says one size on here. I am covering the mirror because my room is kind of messy because I had exams and did not have time to clean my room. Anyways, it comes with a really nice mirror here. And I have not tried this before, so let's go ahead and try it. And yes, I got color matched by somebody who was working at Sephora on that day, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, she kind of orange though. Um, well, that's okay. This is definitely one of the warmer ones. 
this is the Light 4G. Yeah, so it's the Turn Up the Base Powder from Patrick Star's line. And I have really oily skin, so maybe this would be good for like summer if I want just kind of a lighter coverage. I'm wondering if I actually need to buy the puff or not because there's like that really big white cushion that everyone's like, oh, using. But the cushion's like $14 and your girl don't have that kind of money to like spend all the time because I go through cushions really fast. I actually like this a lot. It's not that bad. I was expecting, you know, because I have oily skin, but sometimes my skin dries up very easily because it's sensitive. I was expecting it to look cakey and disgusting, but this is actually quite nice. I really do enjoy um, the texture of this powder as well as how it looks on my skin. It's not really cakey anywhere, really. Um, it's quite smooth. In terms of coverage, it's not the most coverage. You can see it's not a five on a one to five scale. It is kind of like this where you can see a little bit of it still, but I would say it has a little bit more coverage and kind of color correcting than this would be. So I would say, I rated this a 3.5 to four. I would say this would be more like solid four in terms of coverage. Although I would still probably use concealer on a very sleep deprived day where I have like really big eye bags here. But yeah, I think that this is great because one, super, super cute packaging. I am a sucker for marketing. So they did a really good job with this. Um, in terms of like, it's on the go, it's powder. You don't have to worry about it spilling anywhere. I think that's great. It has a mirror. It has a very good quality mirror, actually. I'm very impressed by that. And it's just so beautiful. So I think in general, in terms of the finish, um, well, first of all, application is a five. This is the best, I think, out of all of them in terms of like on the go, when to use it during any season, it's great. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for dry skin, but for oily skin, this is a five. For the finish, I would say it's pretty good. Obviously, powder would mean matte, right? And I think this is, it does a pretty good job of doing matte finish. So I would say like a 4.5. I think as a powder foundation, this is fantastic. So I would say 4.5 in terms of the matte finish, as well as the coverage, I would say a solid four because it does do a pretty good job of covering up my acne. So that's it pretty much for this video. To recap, I would say the best foundation that I've used for all of them overall would be two different kinds. This Giorgio Armani is great if you have dry skin to just medium combo skin. And for very oily skin, I would highly recommend this one size turn up the base powder foundation. So those are my two picks and just what I would say you should use all the time for every occasion just because of how versatile it is, how lightweight it is, and just how good it looks without having to make your pores feel stuffy regardless of your skin type. So. That's it, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you wanna see next. See ya!